Tonight, the 7th Annual Gannick Apple Awards, presented by the Guides Association of New York City. And now, please welcome the President of the Guides Association of New York City, Dr. Emma Guest Consalis. Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight for the 7th Annual Gannick Apple Awards. It is no secret this year has been uniquely devastating to the world of New York City tourism. From part-timers and hobbyists to veteran career professionals, all tour guides in the city found themselves out of work and facing uncertain futures right at the outset of what had promised to be a glorious busy season. But we tour guides are a strong, innovative, resilient bunch, just like New York itself. And to paraphrase Stephen Sondheim, we're still here. We celebrate the glories of New York City. The pace of life as we know it is on its way back and the beauty of this golden metropolis that we call home. There are so many traditions we are excited to return to. This is Return to New York. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce our host for the evening, a brilliant journalist and a kind gentleman I am so proud to call a friend ever since he was a guest on one of my tours, Mr. Bill Ritter. Emma, thanks for that great introduction. You look fabulous, if I can say that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the seventh annual Apple Award Ceremony presented by the Guides Association of New York City. You know, there's there's something encouraging about the lucky number seven for this year's awards. It speaks to the survival, the pause, the pivot, the perseverance of this town and this industry, both of which were hit last year like never before, but have come back 
swinging. You know, many guides have put their talents to use in other temporary jobs. Well, some have used the time to improve their scholarship and still others discovering the market for virtual tours and brought their knowledge and love of the city to audiences in quarantine. One of the many mantras guides have shared is, if you can't be flexible in the tourism trade, you're in the wrong trade. And flexible we are. Here at the Gannick Apple Awards, a show that would traditionally be live is now virtual. A cocktail normally mixed at the bar of the theater, you prepared at home. A tux that usually includes pants. I won't tell you if you don't tell what I'm wearing. But anyway, we are celebrating this city. That's the main point, and this is very important. We hear so much talk about the new normal, but celebrating should always be normal. Some have asked why we continue to celebrate the city with these awards in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of shutdowns and closures and quarantines and so many people out of work. The answer is simple, because celebration is necessary and needed and keeps us normal and keeps us human. Our experience of New York City can be negative, but can also be gloriously and magnificently positive. We need to send our compliments to the chef at least as often as we demand to speak to the manager. We need to say thank you more often than we say, how dare you? We need to raise a joyous toast more than we need to shake an angry fist. As Emma Golden said, if I can't dance, I don't wanna be part of your revolution. And that's why we continue to celebrate New York City. So with all that in mind, let's give out some trophies. Our first award is for outstanding achievement in support of New York City culture. To present, we have one of the most accomplished song and dance men working in theater today. Out of his seven Broadway musical roles, you've most recently seen him as the Duke of Veselton in Frozen. His off-Broadway performance in the title role of Cagney earned him the Fred and Estelle Astaire Award and nominations for the Drama Desk and Outer Critics Circle Awards. Please welcome Mr. Robert Creighton. Good evening. I don't know about you, but I am so ready to get back to the theater. I'm ready to sing and dance. And as Kermit the Frog says, make millions of people happy. That was, that was really bad. Uh, whether you're one of the 8 million people who call New York City home, or one of the 60 million plus honored guests who visit us each year, I'm so excited to get back in front of you doing what I love. And I have no doubt that I speak for all the actors, musicians, novelists, poets, museum curators, athletes, restaurateurs, and other purveyors of culture to New York City. That is how this town expresses itself and how we New Yorkers express our identity to each other and to you. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Support of New York City Culture are Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS, The Line at the Public Theater, The Museum of the Chinese in America, The Schomburg Center, and the Gannick Apple Award goes to The Museum of the Chinese in America. This is the Museum of the Chinese in America's third nomination and first win. This is amazing. Wow. This is incredible. Thank you so much to Guides Association of New York. This is the third time we've been nominated. And as my colleague Edward Chang said, third time is a charm. But uh, this means so much to us. And Bob Gelber, you've been our advocate this entire time. But for all the guides we've met, you know, we just, we've been thinking of you. And um, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're safe. I hope you're healthy. That's uh, first and foremost, for, first and foremost, as we always say in Chinese, um, you know, your health is the number one priority. So uh, despite the fact that we haven't seen you, uh, we're thinking of you. Uh, but this means so much to us, especially in this terrible year of uh, the pandemic. Um, uh, just so many issues around race issues, and 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 for Mocha, we've dealt with so much around xenophobia and anti-Asian American racism. And thank you. I know that the guides are at the forefront of advocacy and just sharing with the 60 million visitors to New York City what we are really made of, um, as far as embracing those who come and opening our doors and our homes and our places and our places that we love into to others so um thank you for upstanding for 
you know, all, all the issues that we've all been facing, um, but also to xenophobia and to anti-Asian American racism. And thank you for supporting the Museum of Chinese in America. We are always and will always be a museum by all for all. And we're honored to receive this award. So I'll bring it back to the team. Thank you so much, everyone. And congratulations to our first award winner. It has become a tradition for the Award for Outstanding Achievement in Support of New York City Tourism to be presented by professional guides who are members of Gannick, and this year, no exception. He has spent nearly four decades guiding in New York and Washington, D.C. She is a New York City guide and international travel director who has toured in more than 22 cities on five continents. Both of them have backgrounds in education, and when they guide student groups, well, it's quite visible. Please welcome Ms. Sheila Evans and Mr. Bill Harris. Good evening, Bill. And good evening, Sheila. Where are you presenting from? I'm in Washington, D.C., my home. And you? Oh, I'm at home in New York City. That's the city of my ancestry, and I can't wait to get back to New York City. And we can't wait to have you back. So, let's talk tourism. Well, there definitely hasn't been enough of it this year. Amen. Oh, I mean, how does someone perform an outstanding achievement in New York City, tourism, during the kind of year we had? A promotion and education. Advocacy. Yes, don't forget us. We're still here and we're stronger than ever and smarter than ever. Well, stronger than ever. <laughs> okay, we won't get carried away. <laughs> but in all seriousness, the four nominees for Outstanding Achievement in support of New York City Tourism are all smart cookies who figured out how to adapt. And how to promote, educate, and advocate. They did it on video. They did it on radio. They did it online. And they remind us all why tourism in New York City is a good idea. It is, it was, and it will be again. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Support of New York City Tourism are for bringing New York City past and present to people all over the country via Zoom programs, New York Adventure Club. And for his amazing YouTube videos promoting New York City, Here Be Bar. For making an invisible history visible, New York City LGBT Historic Sites Project and for promoting virtual tour experiences, WFUV. And the Gannick Apple Award goes to... New York Adventure Club. Thank you so much uh, to the incredibly talented guides of the Guide Association of New York City. Uh, truly honored to, to receive this award and truly excited to finally wear a jacket and a bow tie. When I decided to pivot my company's uh, in-person tours and events business into a virtual one, Gannett Guides were some of the first event partners I turned to. And not only did they adapt uh, their events and captivating virtual experiences, but they gave passionate and informative performances that have won the praise of thousands of people tuning in from all, all, all over the country. I can't wait to continue this journey with the Guide Association. Stay safe and thank you again for your support of New York Adventure Club.
Next up, we have the Award for Outstanding Achievement in support of New York City Preservation. Now, to present this award, we have the Director of Communications and Programs for the Historic Districts Council and the Director of Advocacy and Community Outreach, also for the Historic Districts Council. Please welcome Michelle Arbelou and Kelly Carroll. The Historic Districts Council is celebrating 50 plus years of fulfilling our mission to ensure the preservation of significant city historic neighborhoods, building and public spaces, uphold the integrity of the New York City Landmarks Law, and further the preservation ethic. So Kelly and I are uniquely invested in this category. We are proud that more than 100 historic neighborhoods and landmarks are protected, but there are many, many more that are unprotected. This is why these nominees are helping to preserve our past and bring these historic locations into the spotlight. You may have a favorite old building or landmark in your neighborhood, big or small, that is special to you. This is something that binds all New Yorkers together and is a link to our past. The Historic Districts Council is a resource for education and public events. And tonight we are pleased to honor the four nominees that are helping in these efforts too. The nominees for outstanding achievement in support of New York City preservation are for unwavering promotion to their historic neighborhood's history and diversity, East Harlem Preservation. For maintaining 23 historic sites throughout the five boroughs, Historic House Trust of New York City. For fighting off next door construction, the Merchant's House Museum, and for getting four historic districts designated, the Sunset Park Landmarks Committee. And the Gannick Apple Award goes to the Merchant's House Museum. How wonderful. Thank you so much for this honor. I'm Anthony Bella, board member and frequent spokesperson for the Merchant's House Museum. And as you all know, it's been a struggle to ensure the safety and longevity of the Merchant's House. Well, basically since Gertrude Treadwell first shed this mortal coil and left Papa's house in essence to the world under the stewardship of dedicated individuals and supporters. That's almost as long now as the Treadwells actually lived in the house. We fought valiantly. The staff, the board, the volunteers, and those thousands and thousands of intrepid lovers of the house, literally all over the world, to keep a little house that could standing and healthy. And with the advent of COVID and the shutdown last year, We've embraced means of broadcasting both the treasure this house is and the treasures it contains to a broader audience than ever before in ways we only dreamed of doing before. I firmly believe that the myriad of virtual tours, specialized connoisseurship lectures and videos, marvelous readings of period literature, recreations of actual life events during the Treadwell's residency, and all the other special online ways of highlighting the house we created this past year have propelled us forward in our battle against inappropriate development and the resultant damage, if not total destruction, the house faces as a result. More people than ever appreciate what the house is, what it contains, and perhaps even more importantly, what it represents to New York City and the world. The public's support of our efforts and need has been tremendous. Thank you so much for this acknowledgement of all our efforts, both in preservation and education, this award, this award represents. It will be displayed with pride, the newest object in the museum's collection. Thank you again so much. Though the Gannick Apple Awards have always been held on a Monday, this particular Monday in 2021 was chosen very carefully and deliberately. This weekend, the guided tourism industry observed International Tourist Guide Day. Joining us from Cape Town, South Africa, to tell us about International Tourist Guide Day is the president of the World Federation of Tourist Guide Associations, Aluska Ritchie. Good evening. The World Federation of Tourist Guide Associations represents members in approximately 100 countries. We strive to promote the profession of tourist guides globally, encouraging all to acknowledge the importance, the role of the tourist guide in the value chain of tourism. Traditionally, on the 21st of February, we celebrate International Tourist Guide Day, 
This is a day dedicated to us, by us, the Tourist Guide, and allows us to promote the sector on a larger scale. Members celebrate in a variety of different ways, including giving tours to the local citizens and the school children. And many of the Tourist Guides have become quite innovative with how they are doing International Tourist Guide Day this year. I would like to use this opportunity to say thank you to GANIC for arranging International Tourist Guide Day event for the local guides. It was an amazing panel discussion and what a fantastic job. And tonight, to all the Apple Award winners and nominees, I wish you congratulations. You live and guide in a beautiful city. One that I visited twice in my life and would love to be back soon. I'm very proud of the Gannick Guides and at how they have showed flexibility, strength and innovation. I wish the City of New York, you the Tourist Guides and all the amazing tourism ambassadors of the city the very best for 2021. Our presenter for Outstanding Achievement in Radio Podcasts, Audio Spoken Word, has a voice that will instantly be familiar to any classical music fan in New York. He is WQXR's morning host who begins our days with a dose of musical classics. And on the air for more than three decades, he shares a kinship with his fellow broadcasters on radio and on podcasts. Please welcome Mr. Jeff Spurgeon. Thanks and good evening. In this crisis, when we're spending so much time at home, radio and podcasts might be getting more attention than in the past. I need recommendations for a new podcast, maybe something your friends and family are asking online. Alexa, play radio stations with Beethoven, maybe something to try. The voices of broadcasters and the content they bring share a common element. They transport us to a different place, to a different time. These nominees are all about New York, but they provide a different menu. For listeners. Podcasts can focus on niche subjects. Radio programs can celebrate a world of music. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Radio Podcasts Audio Spoken Word are Cafe's Stay Tuned with Preet podcast, host Preet Bharara, Gotham Center's Sights and Sounds podcast for Lost NYC, History Author Show podcast, host Dean Carianis for the episode Lou Gehrig, The Lost Memoir, and WQXR for its mostly Mozart festival online. And the Gannick Apple Award goes to Gotham Center's Sights and Sounds podcast for Lost NYC. This is Gotham Center's second nomination and first win Hello, Gannick. Thank you so much for this award to the Gotham Center for Lost NYC. I'm Peter Krishnai, the director. Um, we're touched and honored to be recognized for the work that we do on this series, which is a, a passion project. Um, and very grateful to everyone that uh, uh, helped us make this possible. So let me just start there and thank um, Dita Ecker and Jessica George on the Gotham Center staff for the excellent work that they do in making this podcast happen every year. David Hoffman and Garrett Tiedemann of Citizen Race Car Productions that helps with the post-production. Post um, and most importantly, Greg Westner and former head of Open House New York and Elise Shin, um, who have been crucial partners in supporting this. Um, and it's been a privilege to work with them on the Open House New York weekend event, which is just one of New York City's great treasures. Um, all the scholars who produced such wonderful scripts for Lost NYC this year, Russell Shorto, Chris Minty, Leslie Alexander, Graham Hodges, Alex Manovich, Shane, w Shane White, Bob McGee, and Sharon Zukin. Um, we're just honored to get this award from the Guides Association and to be twice nominated. Um, it's a, a real uh, thrill. Um, when our founder, Mike Wallace, set up the Gotham Center about 20 years ago, um, part of the uh, purpose was to create a place where we could network and support everyone uh, out there teaching the people of the city about New York's great, um, unparalleled, rich um, uh, living past. Um, 
we have always seen the many institutions, small and large, that populate the five boroughs as part of that wider historical community, serving that mission, and Gannick, certainly we have always regarded as a steadfast comrade in that mission, and we have very much, and I'll echo Nancy Yao of, of MOCA and saying that you have very much been on our minds this past year. Um, so let me just close by saying thank you all for the work that you do um, in bringing history to life for the people who live and visit this important place um, that we call home. Thank you. This year, the internet has been a godsend and a lifeline for just about everyone. Students have attended schools online, actors and musicians have given performances online, and guides have given tours online. There's a famous story that while Sir Isaac Newton was quarantined during an outbreak of plague, he invented calculus. Do you have any idea how bored you have to be to invent calculus? And where did we read this story? Oh, we read it online. That's where we read it. To present the award for Outstanding New York City website, we have a delightful pair of travel bloggers who went on their honeymoon in 2012 and never came home. Still traveling all over the world and still blogging about it. Their website is Honey Trek. Please welcome Mike and Ann Howard. Thanks, Bill. When Ann and I aren't out hiking a national park or kayaking a remote lake, we're writing and producing our website, Honey Trek. And we know the effort it takes to craft the right words and choose the perfect photo to illustrate a story and actually get visitors to read it. And while we focus on telling global travel stories, we know that writing about New York is like trying to capture the world in a nutshell. And tonight we celebrate four nominees that have honed their craft for Big Apple storytelling. Whether these content creators are telling you about abandoned subway stations or the best pubs in Queens, they always find the essence of this dynamic city and its one of a kind characters. And while we certainly hope you can join us over at Honey Trek, maybe on a chicken bus through Indonesia or a Dow boat up the coast of, of Kenya, you'll be pleased to know that all of the websites featured tonight, you can actually get to on the M5 bus. The nominees for Outstanding New York City website are... Bowery Boys, Tom Myers and Gregory Young, editors. Destination Accessible, Roberta Rosenberg, editor. Murph Guide, Sean Murphy, editor. Untap New York, Augustine Pasté and Michelle Young, editors. And the Gannick Apple Award goes to... Untap New York. This is Untap New York's second nomination and first win. We know New York City is a city of images, and everyone, whether they are natives or visitors, loves to capture the city's most memorable images. Some are gritty, some are elegant, some look forward, and some are winsomely nostalgic. Our presenter for Outstanding Achievement in New York City Photography knows a thing or two about nostalgic images of this city. He's the publisher of Zelda Magazine, the producer of Green Fairy Events, and has worked in photography on more than 35 film and television projects. Please welcome Mr. Don Spiro. Photographs capture moments. Today, if you went outside your door, no doubt the photo you'd take in the background would be mask wearing faces. For New York, the most photographed city in the country, photographers have unlimited potential. The joy of photographing in the city is always what to photograph, there is an embarrassment of riches, offering countless possibilities. Carrying a camera around the city always offers a new chance to photograph a moment in time that would be treasured, and a time capsule of that split second when your finger fired the shutter. We have four unique photos to celebrate tonight. By coincidence or chance, all were shot outdoors. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in New York City Photography are for Black Lives Matter protest, David D. Delgado. For dancer in front of Guggenheim, Jonathan K. Taylor. For Greenwood Cemetery, curved, Nathan Kensinger. For Up in the Heights, Ayinda Stevens. 
And the Gannick Apple Award goes to Up in the Heights, Oyinda Stevens. Oh, guys, thank you so much. I'm I'm in a bit of shock. So yeah, 28 year old me doesn't know technology for five seconds. Um, I just want to say thank you so much to Felipe Vidal. Um, it was his balcony that I was able to get this amazing view of George Washington Bridge in the sunset. Um, I want to thank Matthew Baker for always trying to push me to get to find a way to get nominated for this award. So thank you so, so much. Um, I just want to send all my love to Uptown and to also to the nominees. I was in such great company. I. I am overwhelmed, and all I can say now is just thank you. You know, one thing I admired so much about the community of guides in the city is that very word, community, the amount of support and mentorship, camaraderie and cheerleading that goes on within the world of tourism can easily lead you to forget that there's any professional competition between so many of these folks. And that mentorship and sense of family is perfectly evoked in our next award. To present the Lee Gelber Award for Guiding Spirit, please welcome a former board member of the Guides Association of New York City, founder of the tour company The Fun Foodie, and the comedy show The Food Funny. But most of you know her for the years she spent as chair of the Gannick Apple Awards Committee. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Adrian Cooper. The last time I was holding a trophy at this event, it was to accept my own award, which had been sprung on me without my knowledge in appreciation of the work I'd done leading this whole production from 2015 through the 2019 awards. I'm grateful not only to be able to be prepared for this speech, but also to be able to honor the woman who's very much responsible for creating the person I am today. She is, after all, my own mother. Of course, because she still views me as her daughter first, rather than her tour guide colleague, when Matt first told her of her award, he said he had a good idea for who might present it to her. And naturally, she rattled off 30, 40 other names before Matt suggested perhaps her daughter might be good <laughs> to do the job. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I don't want you to think that she doesn't see, encourage, and respect me as a guide because she does, but she's had nearly a 30 year career in this industry. And so while not only am I a baby to her, but I'm still a baby in the industry by comparison. <laughs> When I was about 10 years old, my mother took a chance on becoming a tour guide. After many roller coaster years as an actor and a singer, she was encouraged by a neighbor to try out a profession that could give her a never ending audience that she'd be able to perform for and share her passion for New York City. Very soon, our home became filled with all things New York, and if mom was reading in her chair, it was likely a book about the city and with a pen and a pad nearby. It was clear to us all quickly that she found the career that she was meant to be doing. She became a member of the Guides Association of New York City and quickly rose up the ranks to becoming the president of the board. Her dedication to the industry of tourist guides did not stop with New York. She volunteered to step up and join the board of the World Federation of Tourist Guides Associations as vice president and was a founding member and uh, vice president of the National Federation of Tourist Guides Associations. I became familiar with names of people who would go on to become my colleagues and even my friends, but I knew these names well before I met them. Names like Hardy Fippen, names like Tony DeSanti, Ruby Roy, Janice Goldberg, and of course, the late, great Lee Gelber, who I'll get back to in a minute. For those who don't know, these positions are not ones you take for recognition or prestige. You do so because you want to serve your profession, your fellow guides. To give your time and effort to these organizations alone is worthy of such a title as the Lee Gilbert Award for Guiding Spirit. But of course, as her daughter, I saw so much more. Getting back to Lee, about 15 years ago, when I was not sure what to do with my life, my mother and I talked about the possibility of me becoming a tour guide. So she had me shadow her on a couple of her tours. She sent me to Lee Gelber, who led a class on becoming a tour guide and 
What I seem to remember was a closet or a storage space somewhere in Midtown. I remember walking away from that class with much more fascination about Lee than with the possibility of being a double-decker tour guide. I left that to, you know, the others. <laughs> now, I'm so grateful that not only did I get to call Lee my friend and colleague before his passing, but that we would go on to create an award show with an award with such distinction that I'd be able to give that to my mother. Years later, when I finally found my place in the guiding world, my mother, along with my aunt, were my very first tour guest as I did a test run of another company's tour route. She was great in providing feedback and kindness. And of course she came on every other tour that I led after that, uh, every one of the tour routes that I created and was a much more challenging guest on all of those tours. <laughs> Of course, any tour guide who's led a tour for other tour guides knows these things. <laughs> when I became friends with other guides who suggested I joined Gannick, she encouraged me to go for it, even if she was no longer involved. And when I was considering a run for the board, she told me to aim for president. I just got treasure. My mother is not the kind of person to put together a class for people on how to become a tour guide. Nor is she the kind of person who's going to lead 365 FAM tours for the membership within a year. My mother is the type of person who paves the way for others who come after her. She's the kind of woman who cares intensely and puts in her own time and energy to make things easier and better for all those who come after her. She'll gladly let you see firsthand what it is that makes a great tour guide by watching you, by letting you watch her throw her whole self into it. She's the type of person who will cheer you on from the front of the room or the back of the room, whichever you prefer. <laughs> if Lee Gelber was the Dean of New York City Tour Guides, Marta Sanders Cooper is the diva. And who better to tell you about herself than she?
without further ado, the Lee Gelber Award for Guiding Spirits 2021 recipient, my mother, Marta Sanders Cooper. Oh, honey, <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate, oh my God, this is just so unexpected uh, when Matt called me. Um, so honored to receive this award. You know, it, it, we all pass the buck, don't we? We we pass the buck, the good buck, I hope, um, to the next group. And when I came into guiding, I was told in Justin Ferrate's class at uh, Gray Line, where I met Lee Gelber, um, he said, well, now you have to, of course, everybody said you have to join Gannick. So I joined Gannick. And I remember there was a point where I was standing in Rockefeller Center and I was doing a job with a bunch of guides. There were 10 buses, I don't know, a lot of buses dropping off on 49th Street, a bunch of seniors, need I say more. And as they're coming off of the buses, plural, because that was their stop, was Rock Center, uh, and they had to do it double park. They couldn't pull right up because you 10 buses, whatever. Mid-exit from my bus, one of the older people, I saw the police officer walking over and he starts ticketing and got them out fast, whatever it was. But what I remember thinking at the time was, there's a breakdown in communication here. These people are bringing a gazillion dollars, spelled with a K, into this city, and the police are ticketing them. That's a breakdown in what everybody's role is here, and their role is money. So why are we ticketing? And that was when I went to uh, Paul Luskin, who was the president at the time of Gannick. Manny Marco was there. Paul Luskin had been the president for a while. He was one of the first 25 multilingual guides that began the association. It was started when American Express International was the big uh, agency for travel. And these were the multilingual guides, lots of Dutch guides with four languages and whatever. And these were the multilingual guides. And Paul was part of that. I became good friends with Paul and he led me the next uh, step of the way. And that was when I told him what I thought and he said, you should get involved and I did. And I ended up taking the presidency from Paul Luskin who was really an extraordinary guide. He was a world traveling guide, multilingual, so brilliant and so respected around the world. My first uh, thing that I did as president was that I went to the National Federation of Tour Guides Association, the founding membership meeting. And that was Vicki Schwartz out of Washington that was doing that. I met Donna Primus, who was the head of the Chicago Guides. And we started the foundation, the, the National Federation, sorry. I went to Washington DC with it. I went to San Antonio with it. Uh, they asked me to be the vice president. So I was, and then I went on to the World Federation where I represented the tour guides, the National Federation. And I sat at a table of international guides and I thought, this is what it's like to be part of the United Nations. This is what it's like to be representing different cultures. Oh, look at me getting emotional. I remember the respect that I had for each and every one of those guides. I was sitting next to a blue badge guide and I was going, whoa, this is the creme de la creme. Um, and I thought at that moment, you know, this is a place, if I had been younger starting out, I might've considered sitting around an international table at the United Nations. I thought this is a place that I can see myself. I continued, I became the vice president of the World Fed. I represented uh, guides three times at world uh, conferences in Hong Kong and Scotland and in Melbourne, Australia. Um, I learned so much about myself, about the world, about not only guiding, but it enhanced my knowledge of people of what, what we all share. And of course we know that, but also that we're storytellers and all of us have an important history to tell. Here I was representing what I consider is the greatest city in the world because it's an American city. So it's not something where this is what we do here. 
as long as you're respectful. That's the tapestry of this brilliant city that makes so much sense to me because I can be a tour guide and I can be a singer and I can be a mother. I came back from that experience and through the process of change, it's when uh, they put in the Guides Association, the test uh, by the city, they changed the test and it was time to move on. I moved on and I moved back away from the association because I'd done my bit. I moved back into entertaining, not only on the streets in Times Square, but on stages. And I've since gone on to sing at Carnegie Hall and Rose Hall and, and around the country. And, uh, and so I've been able to combine my two worlds, which are just communicating, just telling stories, whatever the stage in the middle of Times Square or at Carnegie Hall so grateful for the people before me who taught me what it was to be professional, to be proud of this city and this incredible profession of storytelling that we all do. I have watched as the association has gone through changes. I've watched as, as Adrian has become a part of it and been so proud of how she's gone on and and worked on the, you know, did the um, the awards presentation, something that we never had when I was involved. But I've also, through Adrian, I've had an opportunity to get to know some of the people that have run the board, had been the leaders of GANIC. And I just want to say, I think that uh, you all are doing a tremendous job. I, I love the new energy, the new uh, insight, and I couldn't be more proud that I continue to be a proud Gannick New York City tour guide. We're all independent contractors. The thing that ties us together are the numbers of those of us who do it. That's why you have an association. People used to say, why do we have to be involved with the World Fed and the National Fed and the why, 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 why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because when somebody says, who are you? What do you do? You say, I'm a tour guide for New York City and I am connected to X amount of thousands of tour guides in this country and even more thousands in the world. We all are elevated by each other others profession. You say blue badge guides and people go, ooh, we're connected to them. That's why we have an association. We have an association so it makes a difference for the rest of the world to listen to us. The rest of the world, meaning New York City politics, New York City and company and the mayor's office when we need something done. That's just the way it is. I thank you so much for being recognized. We give a lot. We don't know. You know, we don't do it for the recognition. Um, at this point in my life, what happens? You get white hair and all of a sudden people give you awards. I, I like them. I, I like it very much. I feel honored. And I just want to say that I am honored to be part of your past, but part of your association, the tapestry of what this profession is for this city, for this nation and for the rest of the world. I thank you very, very much. If the phrase stranger than fiction sounds like a good way to describe the times in which we live, you will get no argument from the author of the play 72 Miles to Go, whose off-Broadway premiere at the Roundabout Theater Company just happened to take place two days before New York City theaters were shut down because of COVID. To present the award for Outstanding Achievement in New York City Book Writing Fiction is a winner of the Writers Guild of America Award for the Americans. Please welcome Ms. Hillary Bettis. City is a city of words. The words that come from the minds of so many authors writing about New York City. When you read Gotham set stories, you can feel the city in the books. 
And then when you stroll the sidewalks, you can feel the books in the city. Tonight's nominees for Outstanding Achievement in New York City Book Writing Fiction are as different from each other as they can be, all set in different decades and featuring characters of wildly different backgrounds and personalities, yet all intrinsically, unmistakably New York. And the nominees are Brooklyn Roses by Catherine Gigante Brown, The City We Became by N.K. Jemison. The Lions of Fifth Avenue by Fiona Davis. We Came Here to Shine by Susie Orman Schnall. And the Gannick Apple Award goes to Fiona Davis, The Lions of Fifth Avenue. This is Fiona Davis' second nomination and first win. Wow, I am just absolutely thrilled. Thank you so much to the Guides Association of New York. This is really exciting. Um, you know, thank you, first of all, for everything you do um, to show off the best of New York City, which was, of course, especially important this past year. I have heard from so many readers um, that the one thing that's gotten them through quarantine was being able to dive into a book and that strolling around New York, even if it's only on the page, has helped with some of the hardship that we've all experienced. And so I am just honored to be here alongside these terrific authors who love the city as much as I do, including my fellow nominee, Susie Orman Schnall, whose friendship I truly treasure. And I just wanna say a, a huge shout out to the entire team at Dutton, including my editor, Stephanie Kelly. Also thanks to Kathleen Carter, Stephanie Lieberman, Greg Wands, and my, my whole family. Um, thank you again. This is just terrific. I'm, I'm truly honored. Our next presenter knows more New Yorkers than just about anybody. I say that because he wrote about 600 of them for his book, Notable New Yorkers of Manhattan's Upper West Side. He is past president of the Roebling chapter of the Society for Industrial Archaeology and an active volunteer at the New York Historical Society. He's also a recipient of the Mayor's Award for Volunteer Service and the Morningside Heights Historic District Committee Award for his work as a director of the Bloomingdale Neighborhood History Group. Enough names in there for you? To present Outstanding Achievement, New York City Book Writing Nonfiction, please welcome Mr. Jim Mackin. In the world of nonfiction, we aren't making it up. Authors will spend untold hours and minutes looking up arcane information to help their New York books. We will ask, what was that street address? What was the wife's first name? Is she in Greenwood or Woodlawn? Nonfiction writers are adding to their knowledge about the city. They are putting a book in the reader's hands about a subject that possibly never had such a book, but it does now. We celebrate books that bring old New York and modern New York to readers. All of tonight's nominees for Outstanding Achievement in New York City book writing, and that's nonfiction, share a passion for this city. And they are Boss of the Grips by Eric K. Washington, The Invention of Public Space, Designing for Inclusion in Lindsay's New York by Mariana Mogilevich, Walking Broadway by William J. Hennessy. The Young Lords, A Radical History by Joanna Fernandez. And the Gannick Apple Award goes to Boss of the Grips by Eric K. Washington. Oh boy, <laughs> thank you, Gannick Guides Association of New York. I'm I'm thrilled. I'm overwhelmed, and uh, you know this book came out of um, out of guiding. I was giving tours of Grand Central Terminal, and uh, I was privileged to rediscover um, my subject, uh, James H. Williams, um, at Grand Central, and I never imagined how much uh, it would shed light on Harlem. Uh, which at a glance seemed to be just two uh, incongruous uh, communities, but there's the terminal city and the city within the city that was Harlem. And I was amazed. You know, the red caps 
uh, who uh, Williams hired by the hundreds and, and trained most of them young black uh, college men who needed a, a job to defray their school costs. Um, this was a, a job that they were relegated to by race. It was a, a rough uh, Jim Crow job. Um, but they were also required uh, to be walking encyclopedias. So they were in a very real sense tour guides themselves, but not just by requirement. They were also as astute New Yorkers. They absorbed a lot. They, they networked with people. They talked to people. They knew where people were going, what they wanted. Uh, and they knew the city because most of them were, were, were from the city. Um, I've got, you know, I don't like to have favorites, but um, one fellow, William T. Lone Wolf Davis, used his tips from, from red capping uh, for his passion to be an adventurer. Uh, he was a motorcyclist and he circled the globe um, from Harlem uh, on his motorcycle in 1929 and came back in 1930. But he was also riding back to New York um, his observations of, of, uh, and experiences, the people he met um, all along the way on all the continents of, of the globe. And another George Gabriel who was from uh, Abyssinia and he was uh, an interpreter for uh, uh, former President Teddy Roosevelt who got him the job. He said, if you ever come to New York, um, look me up. Gabriel had been all over the globe except for North America and he looked him up. He ends up um, using his 18 languages at Grand Central Terminal. Um, I, I, I thank you for acknowledging uh, the contributions of James H. Williams, the man who made all of this possible for the for so many of these men. And, you know, Chief Williams, I, I think, must surely be in the telling of, of Grand Central. Uh, we inevitably have to speak of acknowledge uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt, uh, who, who created it, uh, Jacqueline Onassis, who kept it from being destroyed. But I think uh, Chief Williams also will will count as one of the great heroes of, of the story of Grand Central, but also of these other neighborhoods that he was a, a part of. So thank you very much. Um, I, I will treasure this. I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Thank you. For outstanding achievement in article, essay, series writing, reminds us that New Yorkers are always looking to their pages and screens to stay well informed about the city and the world in which they live. You know, to a good number of New Yorkers, for an entire generation, local news and journalism in the five boroughs was synonymous with one name. Please welcome two-time Emmy Award winner, Ms. Roma Torre. Thanks, Bill. The saying goes that while the cure for boredom is curiosity, there's no cure for curiosity. It has been attributed to Dorothy Parker, though some say it was actually Ellen Parr who uttered those witty words, and it has been seen in that time-tested New York City institution, the Reader's Digest. But if anything can cure curiosity, it is the endless fascination, the compelling stories, and the crackling energy of New York City. There are journalists who travel all over the world to report their stories, but if you only do it in one place, do it in New York. After all, the world is here. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Essay Article Series Writing are Lori Gwen Shapiro for The Improbable Journey of Dorothy Parker's Ashes, The New Yorker. Joan L. Roth for Monumental Women, Lilith Magazine Blog. Jerry Seinfeld for So You Think New York Is Dead, The New York Times. Take a Walk New York Newsletter. And the Gannick Apple Award goes to Lori Gwen Shapiro, Dorothy Parker's Ashes. Congratulations. Oh, how wonderful. And thank you to Gannick and to my fellow nominees. I just want to say that Dorothy Parker probably said it best, which is, I hate writing, but I love having written. <laughs> and this is one of those times. Um, I, I do want to thank uh, Kevin Fitzpatrick, who about two summers ago told me in the middle of the Bronx on a private walking tour that we were going to bring Dorothy Parker home on Amtrak. And I had to keep a secret. And I'm a Lower East Sider. And right away, I was able to get this to the New Yorker, which is the only place Kevin wanted uh, Dorothy's story to go. And uh, I want to thank my 
wonderful editors there, Nimal, um, uh, Eames Scott, and Daniel Zaluski, the features editor. And I would like to also thank Dorothy Parker's grandnieces, uh, Susan, Nancy, and Joan and the fact checkers and photographers and even my uh readers uh which every writer has to have a good friend that's a reader and thank you to corey powell and seth calendar and i just am so thrilled it's just a wonderful thing to be part of this um evening and this is a tough crowd of new yorkers and i'm a native new yorker so i know what a tough crowd means thank you so much <laughs> This next remarkable lady has been guiding tours for more than three decades. She's a Gannick member who specializes in jazz and gospel tours of Harlem and one day getaways to the Hamptons. Please welcome Ms. Peggy Taylor. How many words have been used to describe New York? New York is tough. New York is powerful. New York is exciting. New York is fast. But I think that before all those many descriptions, New York is beautiful, and beauty deserves always to be celebrated. That's what we tour guides do. We celebrate the beauty of the city. And once that beauty is gone, we don't stop celebrating. We continue to remember it and to cherish it, and it is always there within us. As Dr. Seuss said, don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. And in keeping with the grand tradition of the award ceremonies that have come before us, the Gannick Apple Awards takes this moment to remember the beloved people and institutions of our city that we lost this year. Not to mourn, but to celebrate. We celebrate those we have lost and we thank them for their legacy as we say goodbye.
to present the outstanding achievement in New York City food. He's a pillar of the great neighborhood of Harlem, has authored four cookbooks, and owns more than a dozen restaurants around the world. He is the global brand advisor for Bon Appetit magazine and is a legend of international cuisine. Please welcome Chef Marcus Samuelson. For the last six years, Danik Apple Awards looked for balance in his nominee for outstanding achievement in New York City food. Either the way, it's been concentrated in an old historic institution, celebrating not milestones and anniversaries. Or the way it's highlighted food activists looking for more ways to improve inclusion, representation, access, and opportunities in food. This year's is a little bit of both. Two of the nominees are legends of ethnic cuisine that have been around longer than any of us. And two are essential organizations whose work has never been more important in the time of the pandemic and lockdowns. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in New York City Food are, for over 80 years, Kosher Excellence, b and Dairy. For Major Hunger Relief, Food Bank for New York City. For 100 years of dim sum excellence, Nam Hua Tea Parlor. For outdoor, socially distanced fresh food option at the green markets, Grow NYC. And the Gannick Apple Award goes to Food Bank for New York City. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Marcus. I'm Jennifer Smith. I'm the Director of Events and Production for Food Bank for New York City, and I'm very honored to be here and to accept this award on behalf of our organization. I want to thank the Guides Association of New York, um, Matt Banker and Bob Gelber. Um, for more than 36 years, Food Bank for New York City has served the city's largest hunger relief organization. We've been here for New Yorkers through some of the toughest moments in our city's history. Disasters like 9-11, hurricanes, and here we are now in the midst of a global pandemic. And the Food Bank is working hard to ensure that we can provide all New Yorkers with the resources that they need. In New York City alone, as we just saw in the tribute video, more than 1,000 restaurants have closed permanently as a result of COVID-19. And that equates to tens of thousands of jobs gone and millions of dollars lost to local economies citywide. But hunger and food insecurity was here long before the pandemic. More than 1.5 New Yorkers were already struggling to make ends meet before COVID hit. And as a result, we saw a record number of people lining up at soup kitchens and food pantries across the city, many for the first time. And um, that's where Food Bank has come to the aid of our neighbors. Last year, Food Bank provided more than 80 million free meals for New Yorkers, and we're on track this year to distribute more than 120 million meals. And we could not do that without the help of all of our donors and our fellow New Yorkers. So we wanna thank you again for being New Yorkers, for, um, for this honor. We're humbled to be here and we're grateful to be part of the fabric of New York City. Thank you again. In a city of more than a hundred museums, two of the most uniquely rewarding are the museums on Liberty and Ellis Islands. Here to present the award for outstanding achievement in New York City Museum exhibitions is the mover and shaker of those institutions, the vice president and chief advancement officer of the Statue of Liberty Ellis Island Foundation. Give a nice welcome to Mr. Rich Flood. Tour guides make it their mission to make the past come alive and bring cultures from the other side of the world right in front of your eyes. Museums do the same. Guides do it with words and energy, sharing their love for the subject in the hopes that it will be contagious. Museums do it with objects, whether with painting, sculpture, historical artifact, scientific curio, or any other object that can make you say, hey, I need to go to New York and see that in person. A museum can create a bond between you and a grand world so much larger than yourself. Maybe that's why museums and guides are such a good fit. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in New York City Museum exhibitions are for Agnes Dennis, Absolutes and Intermediates, The Shed. For Ebon Flow, Tapping into the History of New York City's Water, 
the New York City Municipal Archives and the Museum of American Finance. For Making the Met 1870 to 2020, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. For Traveling While Black, A Century of Pleasure, Pain and Pilgrimage, the Schoenberg Center. And the Gannick Apple Award goes to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. This is the Metropolitan Museum's third nomination and first win. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jennifer Redding. On behalf of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, it's really an honor to accept this award from Gannick. The exhibition Making the Met 1870 to 2020 was originally conceived to open last spring as a centerpiece of our 150th anniversary celebration. And then with the pandemic, we were closed for nearly six months. Happily, the museum reopened on August 29th, and we were able to welcome visitors back to the galleries to see Making the Met, as well as other exhibitions and the collection spanning 5,000 years of art. What you may not know is that the Met started with literally nothing, no building and no works of art. The exhibition Making the Met took visitors on a journey from that starting point through pivotal moments in the museum's history, showing how it evolved to be the global collection it is today. But at the end of the day, the Met is a hometown museum, and we're in such amazing company with so many other wonderful museums and attractions in the city. New York's dynamic professional guides have always been a part of the Met's journey, helping us bring the museum to life for visitors, making it accessible, enjoyable, and memorable. And for that, we thank you. And our final presenter for this evening has written and edited eight books on New York City history. He's a tour guide, a Gannick member, and a three-time Gannick Apple Award winner. Please welcome the man who brought Dorothy Parker's ashes home, Mr. Kevin Fitzpatrick. Thank you. Some people might believe the greatest families in New York were the Astors, Rockefellers, Vanderbilts. But for a lot of us, our favorite family is named McCourt. You don't have to be Irish to know that when our honored guest is around, your eyes will be smiling. Malachi McCourt, actor, writer, supreme raconteur, is a hero to me because not only did he meet Dorothy Parker, he hit on her. Today, he is the lively co-host on WBAI, still counted on to raise hell, and author of 10 books. Since he landed back in New York at 20, his life's journey from longshoreman to stage actor, to working in bars to movie sets, meeting the queen by chance and presidents by invitation, Malachi has had the rich life only New York City could provide. Most know he works as an actor and nobody can touch Malachi when he puts on the Roman collar of a clergyman. Malachi has played priests and even bishops on soap operas and in movies, as well as cops, judges, and wisecrackers. He's been a successful publican. Make sure you heard that correctly, not a Republican. But he put the glass down decades ago, and now he's around to be a beloved Upper West Side grandfather of eight, with the first great-grandchild due soon. Malachi was born in Brooklyn, and from age three, raised in Limerick, source of the McCourt family stories of hardship and inner strength. School stopped at 13 for him, but as he has said, he has been an omnivorous reader, and that saved him and today he's an authority on history and literature. Malachi left home and started his life in New York on the docks in 1952 with a ticket from his older brother, Frank. He broke into acting with no training except being Irish and having a beard and a brogue. That career took him to Broadway and off-Broadway and regional theaters and plays such as Mass Appeal, Da, The Hostage, and Inherit the Wind. Soap operas such as All My Children led to parts in films big and small such as She's the One, The Other Guys, and The Devil's Own. Malachi comes around on TV every holiday season as the narrator of Angela's Christmas on Netflix. Malachi told stories behind his bar on 3rd Avenue and Brother Frank in front of a high school blackboard. They combined their talents 40 years ago for review, a couple of blaggards, performed around the world on cruise ships in Africa, India, Ireland, and the West Coast. Malachi imparted this wisdom. Laugh at yourself first before you give the other bastard a chance to do that. With the McCourt name becoming a brand in the 1990s, Malachi turned 
to a new avenue for his stories, books. Almost 25 years ago, his first book, A Monk Swimming, came out. The title of the memoir is derived from young Malachy's mishearing of the line in the Hail Mary, Amongst Women. It is the candid epic tale of his young adulthood. It's the book where his wisecrack on t live TV got him sued. Malachy wrote, if they could only see me now in the slums of Limerick, a big shot sued for a million. But Jesus, isn't America a great and wonderful country? He toured the U.S. and Ireland to promote his books and talk about living in New York City. He has also written an autobiography, Singing My Hymn Song. Danny Boy, The Legend of the Irish Ballad, A History of the Clodder Ring, here's mine, and Harold Be Thy Name, a lighthearted daily reflection for people in recovery. His most recent book, Death Need Not Be Fatal, are the proud atheist thoughts as he waits in the departure lounge of his life. Malachy said, we're a species with a 100% mortality rate and not one of us accepts it. So it's true, live every day as if it's going to be your last and one day you'll be right. For many years, Malachy has been a part of the annual St. Pat's for All parade in Sunnyside and Woodside, which welcomes all to celebrate Irish heritage and culture, regardless of race, gender, creed, or sexual orientation. Another one of the downsides to this damn pandemic is the cancellation of the St. Patrick's Day parades two years in a row, where Malachy has always been a fixture a handshaker and a singer of Irish ballads. And if he's going to go viral on social media, why not with none other than Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez? He asked her, do you sing? And then serenaded AOC with the Clancy Brothers classic, Will You Go, Lassie Go, singing with the Congresswoman. And don't forget, 15 years ago, Malachy was the Green Party candidate running for governor, unfortunately losing against Elliot Spitzer. Imagine where New York would be if we'd had the McCourt administration. In September, Malachy will turn 90. He grew up in poverty in 1930s Ireland, as we all know. But today he is rich in family, grandchildren, friends, and fans. Why does Gannick present the Lifetime Achievement Award to Malachy McCourt? In many ways, for over a generation, he's been an unofficial and unpaid ambassador for New York City, presenting it on film, talking about New York on radio and TV, writing countless words about the boroughs. He's an activist and Malachy represents the best in what New York City can be to all of us. For 30 years, I always believed what E.B. White wrote in Here is New York and took it for gospel truth. White wrote, there are roughly three New Yorks. There is first the New York of the man or woman who was born there, who takes the city for granted and accepts its size, its turbulence as natural and inevitable. Second, there is the New York of the commuter, the city that is devoured by locusts each day and spat out each night. Third, there is New York of the person who was born somewhere else and came to New York in quest of something. Malachy is a fourth type, which White did not include. The New York of the man or woman who was born here, taken away and returned home with the knowledge and experience gained elsewhere, with an appreciation gained to make a better life here. He said, I don't consider myself an American. I am a New Yorker. Please join me in congratulating Malachy McCourt, the 2021 recipient of the Guides Association of New York City Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, all right. Thank you, Cole. Thank you, Diana, my beloved wife of 56 years, and my grandson. And this is the award. It is 2021. It is uh, GA New York City Apple Award. Awarded with a Lifetime Achievement Award to Maliki McCourt. And thank you. And thank you, Kevin. For that, uh, or, I, I wonder if it is an obituary. <laughs> but whatever it is, it uh, you got it. Uh, you got the, the the important parts of my life. Now I'm going to read an acceptance, and I hope I can read my own handwriting. The usual expression of gratitude is usually expressed by two words, thank you. 
two words that are sufficient normally, but totally insufficient on this occasion to express my sentiments on your most generous award that you have bestowed on me. Other expressions might be uh, might be weightier, such as I'm honored, I am delighted, I am thrilled. I could try to be funny or humorous by saying, I totally disagree with you, but who am I to question the assembled wisdom of the Guides Association of New York in awarding me this uh, lovely piece of work? I accept your award with humility, with delight. And I must tell you that having been uh, a total academic failure in school, uh, I left when I was 13 and I never went back. And now you have removed the self-imposed perception of failure, of being stupid, of being unable to think or to reason, to engage in discussion with grown-ups. And I am accepting this on behalf of the entire McCourt clan, Frank and Mike, Alfie, Eugene, Oliver, Margaret Mary, all whom have uh, decided to uh, leave this world. Sometimes we do not think uh, well, about words, what they mean. Take the word guides. In general, it means to keep another human being, helps another human being to achieve something, to get somewhere, to illustrate a way to somewhere. In your lexicon, uh, how my, you show visitors the marvels of New York, a place that began as a little place called New Amsterdam. Now it's a place called New York, and millions of people are native, and millions more want to be. I often say that all native New Yorkers are from out of town. Not only is New York the home of uh, what are called skyscrapers, but also the streets cap deep tunnels that children think are very close to Australia. And you must know that the famous Empire State Building was built in 1931, and the wonderful bridge called the George Washington Bridge was completed in 1931, and an actor and an author named Maliki McCourt was born in 1931. And three structures, two of which are extremely useful, and one who gets a Guides Association Award uh, for in his 90th year. As guides, you have to know streets, avenues, restaurants, architecture, names on statues, theaters, the famous New Yorkers, parks, universities. You are gifted with the power of description, of descriptive words. You know the saints, the sinners, the famous, the infamous, the actors, the humorous, the politicians, and you love the place you are talking about. You are the gifted too. You are the teacher. You are, you are what you describe. You become that. You are the poet. You are the actors. You are the singers, the dancers. You are the prose people, showing people the way to becoming New Yorkers. <clears throat> Although I was born in Brooklyn and brought up in Limerick Island, I do need reassurance that I am a New Yorker and you have done that with this honor. When I was a small boy growing up in Limerick, we lived in misery, death, disease, despair were the order of, of things. Two of my brothers, Eugene and Oliver died 
my sister Margaret Mary died. And at school, 11 of my classmates died, but did not stop me from dreaming of someday getting back to New York. And they were my dreams, dreams, dreams. My brother Frank got here, sent for me, and the city of dreams, it became my home. <clears throat> All my dreams became real because of the huge heart that beats in New York that you are part of. You make dreams come true for lots of people. And as Yates wrote, had I the heavens embroidered cloths and wrought with gold and silver light of the night, the light, the half light, the blue, the dim, the dark cloths, I would spread the cloths under your feet. But I being poor, have only my dreams. Tread lightly because you tread on my dreams. But you don't. You make them come true. And as uh, I often say, <clears throat> the summertime is coming and the trees are sweetly blooming and the wild mountain time grows around the blooming heather. Will you go, lassie go, and we'll all go together to pluck wild mountain time all around the blooming heather. Will you go, lassie go? And once more, live every day as if it's going to be your last, because one day you'll be right. And may I say thank you, thank you, thank you to the Guides Association of New York for reminding me that I am a New Yorker. Blessings on all your craniums. And on that note, that's our show for this year, ladies and gentlemen. What an honor it's been to be here. I thank you so much. We look forward to next year in person, right? In the meantime, whether safely or in person or virtually online, go take a guided tour of New York City. I've done it. It changed my life. It'll change yours too. Good night and be safe.